Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special bulletin. With everything going on in the gaming industry as of late, as time goes on, we're getting more and more interesting information concerning these consulting companies and the games that they've been assisting to make them more diverse and inclusive and bring them up to date for modern audiences. And boy, oh boy, this latest one I read, this is a doozy coming from that park place. Good old John F. Trent. Compulsion Games Community Manager, Manager Katie Robinson claims, quote, I hate gamers after previously claiming white male gamers were a mistake. My goodness gracious me, can you imagine? I don't know. We like to play this little game where take the white out and put any other demographic name in there and if the phrase suddenly becomes unacceptable well then the original statement is unacceptable uh, and I was so excited I'm not gonna lie uh, South of Midnight looked very interesting the premise the setting I ain't touching this with a 10-foot barge pole as brought to the public's attention by ex-user Screamer RSA, and further highlighted by former World of Warcraft team lead Mark Kern, I believe that's Grums, Robinson announced she was the community manager for Compulsion Games back in September 2023. On Instagram, Robinson wrote, I'm happy and proud to announce that I've joined the amazing team at Xbox's very own Compulsion Games. They made the list, yes. As their new community manager... I bet you're just so lovely. You're a lovely individual, aren't you, Miss Robinson? Cuckoo, cuckoo. She added, after spending nine plus years in the gaming space as a content creator, I'm excited to begin my journey and make an impact on the other side of the industry. How? What? Such a noble goal. As for her post about gamers, she wrote back on February 14th, quote, Honestly, I hate gamers. My goodness, why would you... Be so interested in inserting yourself into the gaming industry if you feel such a way about gamers. My goodness, why? Why do you hate gamers so much? Especially when they are potential customers and can put lots and lots of profits in your pockets. Oh, good old Grums. The community manager at Compulsion Games, the studio that, well, this is a rumor, that Ray Swap, their main character after Sweet Baby Ink involvement, says she hates gamers and says Asians are white adjacent. Oh my goodness. Looking for comments. Grums, I don't think you're going to get any, at least not the ones that we deserve, but I'm pretty sure you're going to get some nice name calling and blocking on Twitter. My goodness, right there. Honestly, I hate gamers TM. What is this adding TM to the end of gamers? What exactly is, I've, I've heard Sterling mention this last year, and I'm starting to wonder, is this some sort of new, I guess, modern audience way of insulting the customers, insulting the gamers? Like it's a bad word? Oh, goodness. Let's make shit up every day as we go along. The post resurfaced after Kern shared information he allegedly received from a former Compulsion, compulsion Games developer that the company had changed the race of its main character, again, south of Midnight, rumor control. In Grums' post, oh, he's got a screenshot. One of the biggest changes of the game were the alterations of the character creation system in Contraband to remove gender differences and allow for random swapping of distinct male and female body parts, facial hair, and more. Uh, there's a lot of games that do that. That's not really a big surprise. But this one, the main character of Hazel, was swapped shortly after Sweet Baby involvement from white to black. But of course, Sweet Baby absolutely had nothing to do with it because they would never take the marketing department to for out for coffee and terrify them as to what might happen if they don't do what you want them to do. Sweet Baby would never, ever, ever do such a thing. Kim Belair never said that. You're taking it out of context. Stop. How dare you take their very own words out of context, you filthy man baby. Ah, it also comes in the wake of Compulsion Games supporting Crystal Dynamics. Oh, this was wonderful. Crystal Dynamics trigger warning. A <laughs> trigger warning for a video game. I don't get it. If you, In case you don't remember, let's have a little reminder. Because, again, eh, 
every video is someone's first. The trigger warning for Tomb Raider 123 Remastered says, the, the, the games in this collection contain offensive depictions of people and cultures rooted in racial and ethnic prejudices. It was a Tomb Raider game, you just, whatever. These stereotypes are deeply harmful for people with thin skin, inexcusable, and do not align with our values because you don't actually have any at Crystal Dynamics. It adds, rather than remove the content because you would piss every single solitary person off and they would not buy the game, we have chosen to present it here because you don't want to face the backlash in its original form, unaltered in the hopes that we may acknowledge it's harmful to people who have no backbone whatsoever, it's harmful impact and learn from it, and yet you're not going to learn anything from what's going on in the gaming edge straight now and what gamers want and what they don't not want anymore. I may have added a little bit here and there. Hmm. Compulsion Games supported the warning post on X saying, many video games are a product of the times they were created in. Yes, video games were created in a time where players wanted to escape the doldrums of reality of their work life and just escape and go have some fun slaughtering bugs, running over hookers in GTA, or chomping dots on the board with Pac-Man, escaping the nonsense of the real world to sit down and have some fun and not have to worry about being preached to. And even the dialogue was, oh God, we're getting to the point where the dialogue was better in the early, in the 90s than it is today. My goodness, the writing in, in a 64-bit game, better than the shit that's come out in the past couple of years. Uh, as we look to recreate and remaster, don't you touch on, uh, like, I think Compulsion Games, definitely a studio I'm going to stay away from, unless somebody comes out and they just knock one straight out of the park. But, hey, I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, as we look to recreate and remaster these stories for modern audiences, oh, the wonderful modern audience that doesn't have a wallet to purchase your games. They don't exist. They are not a demographic that's going to offer you the money that you need. It's the filthy, toxic man babies that sit there and play video games, whether it's in their mother's basement as you like to make fun of, or in their penthouse apartment because they just got home from a long day of work. Doesn't matter where they are. You cater to the demographic. Maybe that's a thought. Make a fun game. Helldiver and Pal World. No politics, no nonsense, fun escapism. And people are loving these games, but you decide to be a part of games like Sushi Squad Kill the Justice League, and nobody's playing that. And that's supposed to be a multiplayer, co-op, ongoing, battle pass, seasonal game. And it's D-O-A. It's important to consider the implication of these harmful portrayals and do our part to rewrite new history. Ah, oh, boy, oh boy. Rewrite new history, not repeat it. Yes, because heaven forbid you would want to repeat the sales figures of the past. Oh, dear. Well, don't worry. Keep talking like this. Keep putting out these messages, these announcements, and the gamers that you so desperately want to get rid of, that you want to purge, that you hate oh so much, will simply close our wallets, go find independence to play, or... Just start playing the hundreds and hundreds of games that we bought that were on sale that we figured we'll play them one day. We'll just go back and play those games. Believe me, I have a laundry list of games that I bought that were because they were on sale that I figured I'll play eventually. <laughs> or I told my dad this. I'll just go dump another thousand hours into Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty because that's just even with the disaster of a release that was. It wasn't ideologically driven. It wasn't preachy. It didn't bash you in the face with anything. And there are a lot of people out there that would consider it woke. With the character creator, with, one, with the bartender, the difference is it didn't smash you in the face with it over and over and over again. Maybe learn from that. Oh, but here's where we get to the good stuff. 
On top of all this, back in 2022, in an interview with Refinery29, Robinson admitted to posting to social media, quote, white male gamers were a mistake. The only mistake they made was giving you any money to let you fail upwards to where you are now. She told the outlet, you're not going to tickle some people's fancy being outspoken or tweeting things like I do when I say white male gamers were a mistake. Gee, you think? Let's go out and insult the majority of the demographic that plays video games. Because again, whether you like it or not, the white male demographic is the majority of people who play video games. Sure, if you want to include mobile apps, telephone games, stuff like that that you can play on the go, yes, 50-50 shot between men and women. But primarily when you're talking about PC and console games, the bread and butter of the video game industry... Again, what got you to where you are failing upward working with Microsoft and Xbox, it's the white male gamer. Because a vast majority of them have this thing called disposable income. And this modern audience that you are so desperate to get into your game, whatever demographic they, are, they may be, we all know who she's talking about when they say modern audience, it's starting to mean something. It's that wonderful little buzzword that has massive, massive meaning behind it. They don't have the disposable income. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, they do not have the disposable income. They're struggling to pay their rent. I'm not trying to be mean about that, but I was there at a time and I was struggling to pay my rent. I'm no longer at that point and I have a good bit of disposable income that's definitely not going your way. And there are a lot of gamers out there just like me. Tired of your nonsense. Tired of your insults. One little thing comes out from one of these studios and my wallet gets shut tight when it comes to any game that you're putting out. And I'm not in a minority. Her lovely little quote continues, I like to think that my kind of presence acts as a way to kind of show people like, hey, you can be outspoken, sure, and there are consequences to the things that you say. Remember? Do you remember that little thing? It's not cancel culture. It's consequence culture. Well, that consequence culture is coming to bite you in the ass because you decided to mess with the wrong demographic. Gamers. They come in all shapes and sizes, all genders, all sexualities, all skin tones, all demographics. And they're not amused with what you have to say. At least the vast majority of them that would put money in your wallet. You can have a backbone and stand for something, which is what the gamers are doing, and still be successful. Because, of course, in the industry, you seem to be failing upward over and over and over again. Later in the interview, while discussing Twitch demographics, Twitch is failing. Twitch is just, a, that's a dying platform. Unless, of course, you want to see the just chatting lovely... Well, I don't want to call him. You know who I'm talking about. Ah... <sighs> The green screen booty shorts that apparently Twitch decided to get rid of. I thought that was pretty inventive. Give me a break. Twitch demographics, she detailed the streaming platform's demographics are, quote, really just a greater reflection of the society at large outside of gaming. Okay. So, hold on, let me see. She elaborated. Let's see what she says. I mean, we see who sits at the top of society in general. Yes, the people who are entertaining. It's that, and also, oh, the subconscious bias and subconscious racism, as compared to the overt, conscious, deliberate bias and racism that you are displaying, and you and your cohorts, different consultancy groups like you, that are open, upfront, blatant about their bias and racism. But that's okay. That's to be pushed aside and ignored. When most people think about gaming, oh, they have one image in mind, and it's probably some white guy. No, I don't know about you, and I'm pretty sure a good bit of my audience, thank you all for joining me, I love you all so much. When I think about gaming, I think about gaming. I don't think about people, I think about video games. I think about the next sci-fi game that I might be taking a look at. I think about what game am I going to be able to pick up? Am I going to have to choose between I don't know, we'll say Helldivers 2, even though I already own it, or the Cyberpunk expansion. Yes, I already own it. But at some point, I had to decide which one. Right now, I'm playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I can't check out Dragon's Dogma 2. I can't 
check out, well, to just list a game because I decided to put my money towards one thing right now. And that's the things that I think about when I think about gaming. I think about jumping onto Rocket League for an hour and just not thinking for a little while. I don't think about some white guy or some black lady. I just think about gaming. This idea to think about a white guy. Think about any person when you think about gaming is ridiculous. Robinson went on to inform the outlet if some... Oh. This isn't racism, folks. This is not bigotry. No matter what anyone says, you're taking her words out of context and just trying to form a harassment campaign against her because you naughty, naughty, cis white boy. If someone white says, I have this apprehension going into a space where, black, where there's black people, that ends up being rooted in something more sinister. Who the fuck says that? Who talks like that? The only time I heard anything like that was the lovely young lady, I believe the, the, the developers in char in responsible for Validate, who said she only hired people of color, black people, for her team because it created a safe space for her employees. Because white people in that, in that safe space, or white people in that space, do not make the space safe because microaggression, microaggression, microaggression. Those are words actually used. Caught on video in, well, probably not in 4K, maybe like 1080p if you're lucky. Who says I have this apprehension going into spaces where there's black people? Again, if you're talking about gamers getting online to play video games, they don't care who you are, what you are. The most they care about, are you good? If you're on their team, are you good? Otherwise, you're a scrub that's going to get insulted to get in your head so they can, they can one-shot you on the next round and be done with your sorry self. That ends up being rooted in something more sinister. And that's when you have to take a look at yourself and ask yourself, why do I feel that way? That sounds like something you and the other individuals in your consultancy groups should probably do. Go ahead into the bathroom, take a look in the mirror, and think about the things that you said, the things that you tweeted. I hate gamers. White gamers were a mistake. These are not words that the gamers are saying. But when we stand up to it, when we speak out against it, and when we show off to the world, to the public, to the internet, the things that you yourself are saying, we get called the bad guys. We're the ones going on a harassment campaign? Okay. You make your decision, oh lovely viewer, oh lovely listener of mine. You take the things that they say and you go ahead and make your own decision and vote with your wallet. Make the decision whether or not you want to give Compulsion Game Studios, or Xbox for that matter, any more of your money if these are the people that they're going to hire to work on future games. <sighs> she also shared that one of her goals... Oh boy, this is a good one. One of her goals for the home pages of YouTube and Twitch is to have, quote, <clears throat> I'm just quoting here, don't. Black folks, folks who are queer, trans, brown, disabled, and not be, wait. Black folks, folks who are queer, trans, brown, disabled, and not be outnumbered by six. That doesn't even make sense. Lord, these quotes hurt my head. Well, we're going to try this one more time. Okay, she, one of her goals. So, I have to decipher this. No, I don't. It's right. The sentence is there. One of her goals is to have black folks, folks who are queer, trans, brown, disabled, and not be... Nope, still doesn't make sense. And not be outnumbered by cisgender white people, specifically white men, because you're a racist bitch. And not just during specific Black History Months. That's a corporate problem. Uh, that's the problem with the corporations. If you have an issue with all these companies, just... Paying attention to black people during Black History Month or women during White History Month. That, that's a month now. That's an issue with the corporations who are simply using your demographic, taking advantage and exploiting your demographic, which you are perfectly okay with. Another thing I do not understand. For 28 days or however long the Women's History Month is. And then dropping your demographic like a bad habit as if you were never there to begin with. And yet, every year, it is celebrated. 
year after year after year, and you call us racists, and yet you still bend the knee and kiss the ass of these corporations who pander to you, disingenuous pandered, pandering over and over, but whatever. You want all these other demographics who don't really make up that much. I have some unfortunate news for you. The cis, white, male gamer is the largest demographic when it comes to gaming. Whether you like it or not. Again, it's just the numbers. So there's nothing wrong with trying to pull in other demographics into gaming. But when you constantly insult the majority of the people who buy your games over and over again, you lose more of the majority to gain a small amount of that minority. Gain 10% of this demographic of black folks, queer folks, brown, whatever, etc., etc., LGBTQ+, alphabet, all that stuff. You gain 10%, but lose 30% of the majority because they're not interested in your ideological pandering and preaching. Just make good stories. And honestly, there's a possibility that this game, South of Midnight, although I don't, I'm not holding my breath, there's a possibility that this could be a fantastic game with excellent dialogue, good story, interesting story, interesting setting, good story progression. I'll have to wait for somebody else to play the game because I'm not touching it unless it's good. And like I've said before, and other people have mentioned, I've even gotten it in the comment section, gamers will ignore a mass ton of bullshit, ideological or not, if the game is good. That is, there's definitely no denying that. I ignored all the bugs and glitches of Cyberpunk 2077 because I loved the game. I enjoyed the game. No way in hell I could recommend it at the time. I can recommend it now, but you understand what I'm saying. Bottom line, you have individuals like this constantly spewing what is legitimate, racist, nonsense, bigoted and biased nonsense, and yet the gamers themselves are the ones that are called the bigots. Help this make sense to me. I do believe you will fail, but you're more than welcome to try in the comments. But that's it for now. Leave a like, leave a dislike. I appreciate you making it this far. Do all those nifty little things YouTubers beg you to do. I'm so close to 2,000. Y'all help me out and share the message. Hope to see you on the next one.